Okay, um, glad that you're watching my recordings, but um, I want to cut back a little bit on the help I'm giving you, but I want to walk you through a few things in this problem. So, of course, this is a slightly different problem. Let's uh, take a quick look at what's here. We've got a ranking cycle. Of course, this is a, another power plant, this time uh, with regeneration. Remember, regeneration is uh, feed water heaters. Uh, we have one turbine, turbine one. Um, a fraction is diverted to a closed feed water heater. So let's. Um, this new element. So a closed feed water heater is one where we have two flows but they don't mix. Could even be more than two flows but typically we have uh, two separate flows and there's heat transfer between the two streams but no mass transfer. So whatever whatever M dot we have coming in, let's say it's state two here, we have the same M dot say this is state 5, it's the same mass flow rate that we have coming in. And then over here, if this was m.3, then let's say this is uh, m.4, well it's got to be equal to m.2 because whatever is coming in has to be going out. So the, the, the flows don't mix, that's a closed feed water heater. Uh, there are three turbines in this power plant, so um, turbine one, turbine two, turbine three, and uh, we also have two pumps, pump one, pump two. Just so you know, these are pumps and turbines, not temperatures and pressures. Um, see what other equipment we have in here. We have a fraction Y prime coming off in this one. We have uh, Y double prime. So this would be our M dot sum state X over M dot total, which is usually M dot one. Um, that is, uh, so our fraction of flow is that ratio, always relative to the total mass flow. Um, we have an open feed water heater also. So difference is that an open feed water heater all the streams maybe there's three four or two um, all the streams mix and so we usually wouldn't um, show any internal piping because the flows all come in that that means that um, whatever um, whatever pressures here, P equals pressure, then all of these states have the same pressure. Where in the closed feed water heater, this could be P3, and down here can be P5. Of course, P5 is going to be the same as P2, and P4 would be the same as P3, so there's no pressure change for each stream, but in general, P2 does not equal P3. So they can be at different pressures. They don't have to be, but they can be. Uh, in this case, you know, P2, P3, P4, and P5, all the same. Equals the pressure inside the open feed water heater. So that tells us a lot. On a saturation curve or on the, on the property diagram. If we have, if this is P, then all these states, maybe um, so maybe this is um, state 2, this is state 4, um, this is state Three, and this might be state five usually. So we're we're uh, combining these 
state three, state four, state two all together to give us saturated liquid at pressure P. And then um, those are all on a single pressure line, constant pressure line. So that helps us identify maybe when we see a lot of points on one pressure line that that's an open feed water heater. Uh, it's probably about uh, everything that's a little bit new here. Um, let's just look at the turbines for a minute. So we have three turbines. And the exit of turbine three is going into the condenser. So, uh, between turbine one and turbine two, we have a fraction that's diverted y prime between uh, turbine two and turbine three we have a fraction that's diverted that we're going to call y double prime so that's another fraction of the total flow which the total flow here is the fraction is one or you know we can put m dot um, m dot 1 or just our total flow m dot there. The um, so there may be some other components I'm just reading through the problem here. Um, it looks like we don't have any reheat in this problem so this just continues on to the turbine, this continues on to the turbine and then these other components go to open or closed feed water heater. I think the first one here is to a closed feed water heater. This is the one with the pipe in it, and then a separate stream. Well, if this is state two, the this is still y prime coming out here, and whatever flow is coming in the other side of the feed water heater is coming out that that same um, high pressure side in this case. Uh, the other one is going to an open feed water heater. And then, of course, we have some pumps and things. So I'll, I'll let you um, work out the rest of the details. But a couple things I'd like to point out. Coming out of turbine 2 and actually going into turbine 2 is since we have y prime being diverted, then we end up with 1 minus y prime continuing on. And so since at the exit of turbine 2, that's the same 1 minus y prime, that's the fraction of the total mass flow, then at this point going into turbine 3, we have 1 minus y prime minus y double prime. So we've taken, let's say y prime is equal to 0.1. So that would be 10% of m dot is being diverted. That means 90% of m dot continues on, 1 minus y prime, and if y double prime is 0.15, then the fraction of mass flow is 1 minus 0.1. We took 10% of the total, then we took another 15% of the total, and so we're left with 0.75 for the fraction, and if we wanted to calculate that mass flow rate, it would be, so the, the mass flow rate at this point, which if I called it m dot 3. So m dot 3 would then equal to m dot times 0.75. And then that would continue on here. At the condenser, the flow here would be 1 minus y prime minus y double prime, or 75% if those were the numbers. And then coming out of the condenser, the same 1 minus y prime minus y double prime. If that goes through a pump and then goes into the open feed water heater, again, this fraction of mass flow is 1 minus y prime minus y double prime. And then ultimately, if we were calculating the pump work, I'm not sure what states those are, so I'll just call it m dot times 1 minus y prime minus y double prime times h exit minus h inlet gives me the work input to the pump. Now, if this y prime, say, goes through a trap 
then goes back into this open feed water heater and then goes out to another pump. Um, I want to take a quick look at this open feed water heater and I will uh, go to another page for this. Let me grab a shot of that. Okay, so we're going to look at a open feed water heater and this could be in general for any open feed water heater but it certainly applies to this problem. Um, I'm going to use different numbers than in this problem so you need to relate it to this particular problem. If I draw a system boundary here, uh, let's just call this state 2, 3, 4, and 5 and let's say that this is state 5 here is going into a pump so I want the quality to be saturated liquid so x equals 0 now if the pressure at state 2 is defined by P2 then I know that P3 also has to be at that pressure P4 has to be at that same pressure and ultimately P5 has to be at that same pressure for the open feed water heater. Now if I have some different things coming in, different fractions of mass flow, so if this is 1 minus Y prime minus Y double prime at state 3, maybe it's Y double prime at state 2, and uh, Y prime at state 4, then when I add those things all up, so the mass continuity equation would tell me that the sum of all the mass flows in has to equal the mass flow out. So let's make sure, so the fraction of flow coming out would be what? So we want to know, you know, the what is that for state 5? All the mass flows in would be at state 2, y double prime. At state 3, 1 minus y prime minus y double prime and at state 4 y prime. And so when I look at that I have minus y prime plus y prime those cancel minus y double prime plus y double prime and this equals 1 so the fraction of flow over here is 1. Erase that Now I'm going to do an energy balance, so DECVDT for this control volume is Q dot minus W dot plus summation M dot I H I minus summation M dot E H E. Of course I'm neglecting changes in kinetic energy, changes in potential energy. And I think that's a good assumption for this. That just means all the elevation of each inlet exit is about the same. Uh, the kinetic energy or the velocity through each pipe is about the same. So that's a reasonable assumption. Another reasonable assumption is that it's steady state, that it's adiabatic, no heat transfer across my boundary, and no work across my boundary or power. So I've got then just that sum of the mass flows in times the enthalpy in equals the sum of the mass flows out minus the enthalpy out. And we put this term on the left side of the equation. So I've got uh, m dot eight or five rather times h five equals m dot two h two plus m dot three h3 plus m dot 4 h4. Then finally I can divide by m dot 5 and if m dot 5 is my total mass flow or it's equivalent to my total mass flow then I can just call that m dot, so if m dot 5 and m dot is equivalent, then this is just 1, 
this term here I can replace with y double prime. That's my definition of y double prime. If you look in the diagram up above, m dot 3 over m dot is 1 minus y prime minus y double prime. And m dot 4 over m dot is what it defined as y prime. So now my equation is no longer, uh, I don't need to know the individual mass flow rates, I just need to know the fraction of mass flow rate. And usually what I want at this point is to find out what y double prime uh, would give me uh, saturated liquid at state 5. So I'm trying to mix the right amount of y double prime so that I get state uh, 3 to raise up its subcooled liquid to get it to become a saturated liquid at the same pressure. So to do that, I have one equation and one unknown, and I just solve for y double prime. So to do that, we just erase this and combine some terms. So on the right side of the equation, I've got two terms with y double prime. I'm going to bring them to the left side of the equation. So this y double prime and this one. So those would be then y double prime times h3 minus y double prime h2 and then I'm going to take the term on the left of the equation h5 and bring it to the right side of the equation and then rewrite all the terms that are left and I have 1 minus y prime h3 of course I'm not including the y double prime because I already brought it to the left side of the equation I have plus y prime h4 and then I'll bring the h5 from the left side of the equation but it's negative now that it's on the other side of the equation so I have all those terms and then I'll factor out the y double prime so this will be written then as y double prime times h3 minus h2 and then I can divide both sides of the equation by h3 minus h2 and then finally this cancels with this becomes 1 and if I erase that and just write that as y double prime then I have an equation here in terms of everything that I know so if y prime was 10 percent I get 0 0.9 times h3 plus 0.9 times h4 minus h5 and then that whole quantity divided by h3 minus h2 and that tells me what fraction of flow I need here to make the condition at the exit saturated which is what I want for my pump. Alright, hope that gives you some background and help with uh, problem two.